When you appreciate what you do have, you create more of what you want. Obstacles are detours in the right direction. Many of us have issues with productivity. Maybe we are overly productive, but we're feeling burnt out all the time. Or read this book, or watch this video, or do this meditation, and that doesn't work. I'm David, welcome to Wise Vibes. Don't dance around the perimeter of the person you want to be. Dive deeply and fully into it. It's a quote by Gabby Bernstein. She's a motivational speaker and New York Times bestselling author of eight different books from spirituality to how to attract anything you want in life. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the eight success rules by Gabby Bernstein, starting off with number one, appreciate what you have. If you're in that job where you're feeling like, this isn't working for me, I'm not into it, I'm mad about it, I get, I, get, I get upset every time I walk into the office. The thing that you're missing here is that, and she's looking at me, she's like, what's she gonna say? I need to, I need to know, I should, give it to me, Gabby, give it to me. The thing that you're missing is that when you appreciate what you do have, you create more of what you want. Appreciating even the job that isn't the one that you want forever actually helps you attract the next career path. And you think it's counterintuitive because you're thinking, well, I don't want to appreciate this thing I don't want. That's sending out a message to the universe that I want something I don't want. Actually, no. The more you appreciate what's in front of you, the more you become a magnet for what it is that you desire. So if you appreciate that job that's not that great, and you bring an energy that's a little bit more of a high vibe frequency, and you show up to work and you've got a better attitude, and people start to like you a little bit more because you're in that appreciation of whatever is around you, and they start to see you a little bit differently, and then maybe they give you a raise, or maybe they see some potential in you, or maybe one day you're just in a really good mood because you've been appreciating everybody and you're not, you're not mad anymore, you're not complaining on your Instagram about how you hate your job, and you're walking through the office and you're in a really good mood and you get in the elevator and you bump into somebody and they say, oh, what do you do? And you say, I'm a copy editor at this company and blah, 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 and they say, oh, how interesting, we've been looking for a copy editor. Because it's your energy and your appreciation that creates that opportunity. So the more that you're in an energy of lack or fear or negativity, the more likely you are to deflect the creative possibilities in your life, the more you are to deflect the new opportunities and the less fun you have, real, you know what I mean? Like the key to attracting what you want people is to have fun, straight up, have fun. Number two, don't give energy to your fears. Beautiful, and Cheryl says, what is Gabby's biggest fear? Good question. Um, you know, I think that, I think that, I don't even want to say them out loud. Yeah. How about that? Cool, I'd say you're fine with me, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to bring energy to it. Yeah, sure, you know? I like that. Can no. you expand on that then? Well, expand here's that. the deal, awesome. we all have fears. Mm -hmm. No matter how committed to love we are, no matter how deeply, deeply connected we are to our own, our own spiritual practice and to God and to the universe, we will always have fear, you know, unless we somehow become enlightened, which is possible. But we will live with fear. And it's, it's, it's not that the fear goes away completely as a spiritual student. It's just that you don't believe in it anymore. So when you ask me to share my fears, it's like talking about something that it's like not true for me. So of course there's fear and they pop up and they're, you know, it's present, but it's, it's not real for me. So it feels like, uh, like I'm doing the world a disservice to say it out loud. Number three, change your perspective. Third step. Obstacles are detours in the right direction. So maybe you can begin to look at your obstacles of maybe that divorce is an opportunity, a, a detour in the right direction, an opportunity to start to love yourself some more. Maybe that loss of that job is an opportunity to begin to do that thing you've been dreaming of. Maybe that diagnosis is an opportunity to get closer to God. Take that in. Let's reorganize your obstacles right now. What are the opportunities? What is the detour in the right direction? In what way can you begin to turn it upside down and see it as an opportunity to thrive and an opportunity to get more connected to the truth? And if you're liking the video so far and like what Gabby is saying, then hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Next is manifest what you want. For our audience, can you define what exactly is manifesting? 
Manifesting is acquiring the experience of what it is that you want to feel mm -hmm. and being and living and believing in that experience and then allowing that experience to come into form. So not only the experience like say um, wanting to go on a vacation, but even if you want something like a new MacBook Air, mm -hmm, <laughs> you can manifest mm -hmm. uh, a new computer or absolutely or being a published author or having your business reach a certain level. So everything falls into that. Everything falls into that category. Sometimes we manifest things far beyond our wildest dreams. Yep. So sometimes if we have a vision of something, it happens in a far greater way. So we want to stay open. Yeah. So we can say, I want that MacBook Air, but maybe we get that MacBook Air that's a little bit bigger than we thought. You yeah. know, or maybe it comes with an extra little gift. Yeah. But allowing ourselves to be open this or something more. Cool. So uh, the way that I think about manifesting too, it's, it's also, it's involved in the process of, of creation or creating. You know, I consider myself an artist and a creator. Do you see like a distinction between manifesting and creating? Manifesting is very creative. It is the process of using your power energy and being in that presence of your high powered energy and allowing that energy to co-create with the energy that's around you. So you're vibrating at a high frequency. I'm vibrating at a high frequency. Ooh, We've done a lot of work. We've yep. cleaned up a lot of our own crap. We yep. believe in ourselves today. Yep. And that, that energy of believing in ourselves has attracted us together today and brought us into this space where we together are co-creating and teaching. If I hadn't cleaned up my side of the street and if I didn't believe in myself the way I do, I would never have manifested being on Marie TV. <laughs> That's very true. Mm -hmm. So I know I like to always believe that I'm co-creating with the universe because there, I really believe there are no um, such things as coincidences and I've had too many experiences in my life where I'm like oh my god that's what I wanted and it all seemed to line up and it was incredible so that's really part of what we're talking about here right is is our ability to to play an active role but almost paradoxically a passive role in helping things that we want come into our life yeah there's a, there's a really nice line from uh, A Course in Miracles which is the metaphysical text I teach and it is miracles occur naturally and when they're not occurring something has gone wrong that's mm -hmm. interesting. It's a good one, right? So what happens is, is that that synchronicity, that flow, that effortless action, that just sort of allowing, oh, I was thinking about that and it just showed up. That's how life is supposed to be. Mm. We get in the way. Our negative belief systems, our fears, our anxiety, our, our anger towards the past, that future tripping and projecting, all of that energy gets in the way of allowing all of the miracles to occur naturally. Number five, improve your productivity. Many of us have issues with productivity. Maybe we are overly productive, but we're feeling burnt out all the time, or we're not productive at all because we don't know where to start. I found personally being in business for myself for the last 20 years that I have been a little overly productive. I almost did too much and I was constantly multitasking and making things happen and just moving so fast that ultimately I really burnt out. And I started feeling brain fog. I was feeling disoriented. I couldn't focus. I was feeling like even though I for so many years was priding myself on the fact that I could get so much done at one time, I actually don't think I was being nearly as productive as I could have been. So I hit a bottom recently with this productivity overload and I realized that I had to change my patterns. I had to change my ways. I was then blessed. Um, I said a prayer. I said, I need some help with my brain fog and I need some help with my productivity issue. And I, that day, got an email from the Dr. Oz show asking me to come on and do a segment with this lovely author and doctor, Dr. Mike Dow. And me and Mike had been in touch many years, um, for many years, just because he had been an author. We were published by the same publishers. And Mike had written a book about brain fog. So that day, I'm like, thank you, universe. You're giving me exactly what I need. I go on Dr. Oz with Mike, and I'm backstage with him. And I'm like, listen, I'm feeling so chaotic, and I'm multitasking so much, and my, my I feel like I've got brain fog, and I'm, I'm forgetting things. And he looked at me and says, how much are you doing at one time? And I said, oh, Mike, I'm doing a million things at once. I have a thousand tabs up on my screen. And he's like, these are big brain no-nos. And they're also productivity no-nos, is what he said. Because he said that the more I try to do and the more I try to multitask, the less I'm actually getting done. So he gave me a tip that I want to share with you that has changed everything for me. And his suggestion was to just do five things a day. To make a list of the five most important things that I need to do that day and not do number two until I've completed number one. And then once I complete number one, move on to number two, then on to number three. And if I don't get through all five in one day, I'll just pick up the fifth the next day or wherever I left off, I'll pick up the next day. 
And to really stick to that list and not move back and forth and not try to make a million other things added onto that list and just be really committed to that five task list. I did it. I started to just be very clear about the five things I was doing in a day. I told my team, I made a, uh, a list in my base camp, which is where we keep all of our notes. And I made it really clear to myself, these are the only five things I'm doing throughout the day. As a result of making it super clear and conscious to myself that I was only gonna do five things, I have been more productive, I have created more, I have been more intuitive, I have been more inspired, and I've been more creative. Number six, speed up by slowing down. I think that lately I've been, I've been sort of accepting something that I've always heard over and over again, which is sort of, you know, that the, the you know you can speed up by slowing down, which is you know sort of a old you know age old spiritual belief system. It's like you know the more you tune in, the more happens around you. And I've always preached that and known that, mm -hmm. but I'm really like really slowing down enough now to believe it and amazing. see it. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Because I think it's so important that everyone hears inspirational statements, we hear insight, we hear wisdom, but it takes so much time for that gravity of that statement to yeah. almost sink into our hearts and our beings yeah. and. It's, it's okay to know that it takes time. I, I love that you say this because it's, it's, it's a practice and it's a path and it's a commitment. And, uh, and to your point, you, you can have this daily path, daily commitment, read spiritual books, practice meditation, watch people like yourself, and be part of this conversation in, in your own unique ways. And then there may be that moment in time where you wake up and you're like, there it is. You know, I get that thing that everyone's been talking about. I get that mantra that I've been preaching. And Number seven, be the light. So we've been talking a lot about ourselves. How do we deal with friends, loved ones who are going through the same challenges that we've been discussing? Mm -hmm. Fears, anxiety, nervous, not living their purpose, you know, all of that. What about if it's the people around us that are really struggling? So be the light, right? So I think a lot of people want to change the people around them. They want to say, uh, you, know, y y you know, read this book or watch this video or do this meditation and that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to, the only requirement for, for membership as a spiritual student is, is the desire, is the, is, the want, is the wanting. And so if somebody doesn't want that, then, then you're going to be, you know, a broken record. So be the light. Practice your own transformation. Get grounded in your own spiritual healing and, and live it. And in the expression of your light, you will reflect that onto others. And they will recognize their own light in yours. So you have a much more, um, like a much higher likelihood of elevating somebody and healing somebody by just being the presence of that light, being that presence of that transformation. And Let me know down in the comments below, which has been your favorite talk so far. Number eight is give love. A very important lesson that's something I've been applying in my own life and a girlfriend of mine called me yesterday and she said that she was feeling really attacked and judged by someone at work and my response was don't defend yourself don't fight back don't judge back your work I said to her is to the moment that you feel judged and attack do something immediately to make somebody else feel loved so when you feel as though someone has attacked you, judged you, bullied you, done anything to make you feel inadequate or unlovable, do the opposite. Do the exact opposite. Go and do something to make other people feel good. So go make somebody feel lovable, adequate, and good enough. And that simple practice of just taking yourself out of the knee-jerk reaction to, to fight back or defend, but instead to go give love, that can change everything for you. So I wanted to give you this message. I'm gonna to have to hang up on you in a moment because I'm going to make dinner, but that is my lesson for you today. When you feel judged, immediately go give love. Go do something kind, do something compassionate, do something loving. That will be the quickest way to stop the momentum of the negative energy. There are way too many haters out there. There's so much negativity, there's so much bullying, and there's so much attack and judgment. And that's why I wrote an entire book about this topic. So my hope for you is that when you feel judged or attacked, instead of attacking back, you go give love. You do something to make somebody feel good. You do something that's based in compassion and love and joy, you make, somebody, you make someone feel good about themselves. Think of someone you know that could use a little happiness boost and share this video of Gabby with them to give them some wisdom to help them out throughout their day. I'm gonna leave you with this quote before you go. I've learned that fear is simply an illusion based on past experiences that we project into the present 
and Onto the Future by Gabby Bernstein. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. If you wanna watch more videos like this, then click this video over here or this video down over here, and I'll see you in the next video. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching.